All right, this is our last video on IR spectroscopy, and we're going to look at some example problems of analyzing IR spectrum. Okay, so this is pretty typical of how I'll often ask um, problems about IR spectroscopy. So I'll give you uh, some IR spectra, and I'll give you some molecules, and then I'll ask you to match the spectra with the molecules, and I'll also ask you to label all of the peaks that you can in the diagnostic region of the IR spectrum. So to save a little bit of time, uh, so I can do it uh, more neatly, I've gone ahead and done the first thing that I always do when I analyze IR spectra, and that is draw lines at 1500 and 3000 wave numbers. Right, so everything at lower frequencies than 1500 wave numbers, that's the fingerprint region, and we're going to ignore that. And so when I look at the IR spectrum, uh, right, we want to look in the double bond region. So that's between about 1600 and 1800 wave numbers. And there are peaks there, but they're not very intense. And so this is probably noise. So this is probably nothing. I don't see anything in the triple bond region. Then I look at the line at 3000 wave numbers and look for my CH stretches. And so as we typically see, we see peaks below 3000 wave numbers. And so these are my sp3 hybridized carbon CH stretches. And then this signal is very typical of an alcohol. So I have an OH in my molecule. So if these are the three possible molecules, I think we can eliminate this one because there are no alcohols. Both of these molecules have alcohols, but for this molecule, I've expected to see a carbon-carbon double bond in the double bond region, which I don't. So that means that this is most likely the molecule giving rise to this IR spectrum. Okay, so just like the last problem, You've got a new spectrum, but the same three molecules. And so when I analyze this spectrum, right, so I'm going to ignore the fingerprint region. And then in the diagnostic region, I first look at my, at my double bonds. And so I definitely have something in the double bond region. And this is a fairly broad peak, and it's fairly intense. So this looks to me more like a carbon-oxygen double bond rather than a carbon-carbon double bond. All right, and then I also see the almost ubiquitous sp3 hybridized CH stretch. And so when I look at my possible molecules, um, the only one that has a carbon-oxygen double bond is this one. And so that's probably the molecule. All right, this one doesn't have carbon oxygen double bonds at all, plus we've already assigned it, so that one's out. Um, and we might have been hesitant because this could have been a carbon-carbon double bond, although my argument based on the shape and intensity led me to believe it was probably a carbon-oxygen uh, double bond. But this molecule would also have the alcohol signal, which we don't see, so it can't be that one. So that leaves me fairly confident that this is the correct choice. Okay. Same three molecules and a third spectrum. So in this case, when I look at the double bond region, this peak is not super intense. And so I might say, well, is that noise or is that something real? Um, now, if I have a carbon-carbon double bond, that means I have sp2 hybridized carbons. And if they have any hydrogens attached to them, I would expect to see a peak at 3100 wave numbers um, due to the, the CH stretch from that sp2 hybridized carbon, right? So that would be the hydrogens coming off here and here and here. And I do see that, right? So I might have been unsure whether this was noise or actually a carbon-carbon double bond, but the fact that I see the sp2 hybridized CH stretch helps me be confident that I am seeing a carbon-carbon double bond here. So this is a carbon-carbon double bond, right? We also have the... sp3 hybridized carbon C8 stretches. Right, it was a different color because it's getting kind of crowded. Right, this is my 
sp2 hybridized ch stretch and then this is the oh stretch of an alcohol and so we're looking for a molecule that has a carbon carbon double bond and an alcohol and so this is uh, the best candidate based on the choices i'm given okay so uh, my last examples, I have four molecules now and four spectra, and we're going to see if we can assign each of these spectra to each of the molecules. So, again, I've got my lines at 1,500 and 3,000 wave numbers. We're going to ignore the fingerprint region. I look in the carb or look in the double bond region, and I'm not seeing much. I've got, uh, you know, definitely not a carbon oxygen double bond. It's not intense enough pretty low intensity, so I don't think it's a carbon-carbon double bond, plus I don't see any evidence of a sp2 hybridized CH stretch, so probably noise. Nothing in the triple bond region. Right, I do have my typical sp3 hybridized CH stretches. And then I see this double peak here, and so that looks to me like a secondary amine. All right, and so I want to see, uh, I'm sorry, not a secondary amine. That is typical of a primary amine. All right, so I want to look, do I have any amines in any of my molecules? And this is the only one that I do, and it is correctly a primary amine. Uh, and so that is the uh, most likely candidate for this IR spectrum. All right, when I look at this spectrum, I see nothing in the double bond region. I see nothing in the triple bond region. There are no obvious alcohols, carboxylic acids, or amines. And so all I'm seeing is the sp3 hybridized CH stretches that we almost always see. So when I see a spectrum like this, my first guess is that I'm looking for an alkane, right? So no functional groups, just all carbon-carbon single bonds with the hydrogens. I don't have anything like that. Um, now, we know that it's not this guy, because we don't have any means. We, we've already assigned this one, so I can cross that one out. I clearly don't have a carboxylic acid, so this one's out. Now, both of these molecules have triple bonds, and so we might, if it was one of those molecules, we might expect to see something around uh, between 2100 and 2500 wave numbers. Um, but between these two, if you remember when we talked about the intensity uh, a couple videos ago, we said that if the molecule was highly symmetric, when that bond or around that bond, we may not see that signal. And so because this molecule is very symmetric, it's not surprising that we wouldn't see this carbon-carbon triple bond. And then since there are no hydrogens connected to those sp2, I'm sorry, to those sp carbons, we also wouldn't expect to see the sp hybridized C8 stretch, or we, we couldn't see it. So this molecule, not highly symmetric, so I would expect to see the triple bond, and I'd certainly expect to see this C8 stretch, which I don't. And so sort of by process elimination, this is, based on the choices we're given, the most likely molecule giving rise to this IR spectrum. All right. Uh, here's another spectrum I've drawn the lines in, uh, and oftentimes I sort of go through, okay, look at the double bonds, look at the triple bonds, but when I see this spectrum, it immediately jumps out to me that I'm dealing with a carboxylic acid, right? I have the hairy beard, the Gandalf beard, and so this is almost certainly the OH from a carboxylic acid, and if I even needed the confirmation, this is clearly a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, which we would expect to see for carboxylic acid. Um, these are the only peaks that I can identify. Uh, if you want to be really precise, you could even say, okay, we also see uh, inside the hairy beard, these are due to the CH, uh, SP3 hybridized carbon CH stretches, but it's okay if you just um, assign the OH from the carboxylic acid to the to the hairy beard. 
And so the only molecule that has a carboxylic acid is this one. All right, so one more spectrum, and we can probably assign it based on process of elimination, but let's go ahead and analyze the spectra anyway. So uh, nothing in the double bond region. Uh, I do have something in the triple bond region. And so this could be a carbon-carbon or carbon-nitrogen triple bond. They look very similar. But the fact that I also have a peak at 3,300 wave numbers, the fact that I have a triple bond and a peak at 3,300 wave numbers, this is most likely a carbon-carbon triple bond. And this is the uh, SP hybridized CH stretch. And so if I label these, that's my carbon-carbon triple bond. These are my sp3 hybridized carbon C8 stretches. And then this is most likely the sp hybridized carbon C8 stretch, right? So that last peak at 30 wave numbers, that's due to this hydrogen from the coming off the sp hybridized carbon. So this spectrum is consistent with this molecule. All right, and that's my last example on this video.